Yo, what up? It's your boy, when JJ Stone, aka Black Gritty. Welcome to another episode of Gritty Nights. And tonight, I feel like Black McAfee. They call me Black McAfee in the streets sometimes. And I got my whole panel, got my team with me. Uh, say what's up to the people, Jason. What's going on, everybody? I feel like an opener for the Phillies before you get to the real talent in the bullpen. Exactly. And that is enough of Jason. Jason is uh, <laughs> producing the show <laughs> for me today. I'm going to bring him back in occasionally, but he's over there handling the comments. So if you're running comments, Jason is on. You got a problem. You talk to him. Uh, Harry. Say what's yeah, up to ooh. people, Harry. What's up, everybody? Well, I feel like I might be uh, the closer tonight, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. So Definitely the closer. Uh, happy birthday, Harry's birthday was yesterday. You. Youngest man on the panel, 29 <laughs> years old. He don't know what it's like to be a grown man, but happy birthday. To you, Harry. <laughs> Appreciate you. All right. Uh, so <laughs> the, the main course you came here for uh, is my guy, Johnny Marks. Johnny Marks is like retired not retired he's out here in these streets like your boy running up on my youtube time frames say what's up to people johnny marks yeah yeah i'm i'm, I'm retired i'm calling the mortgage company saying hey <laughs> can you help me out for a couple months i don't have money for the mortgage <laughs> well it, you know not not well I'm, now you know what it's like to be a civilian johnny marks yeah. you, know, you, you know you know i'm always running up on you in these streets every time i had a chance to i appreciate you coming on and taking the time uh, fun fact, this show has uh, got its first sponsor. Uh, uh -huh. It's one time only thing because they don't really have a lot of money and nobody really wants to sponsor this show. But All for right. tonight and tonight only, uh, let me let me pull it up because I'm not a professional yet. Tonight, our sponsor is uh, Shop Every Little Thing. Okay. Shop Every Little Detail. I, this company, they make custom clothing, custom shirts, fun stuff. Fun fact, it's also in the Marks household and family. So all money goes to help out the proceeds of that family. They got a business going. Even though Johnny Marks isn't working, his wife is out here working. Somebody has got to support Johnny Marks. And I think uh, the wife is going to do a great job with the fun stuff she's over there making. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Shop Every Little Detail.com. Check it out um yeah and it's actually she's she's doing really well with it so it's uh it's pretty cool but she's gonna need to go get a real job is what <laughs> we were talking about like, hey, this, this hey, ain't paying the bills man well for, for right now this is all we got this is all we need johnny marks i, Just, I actually have herb from northeast philly calling me right now as we speak this, this is what happens when you give out your phone number to everybody. <laughs> I, I, I just got your phone number last week. I feel slight. Matter of fact, let me, let me add, add closed. I, how did I just get your number? Urban just calling you randomly on a Tuesday night. What's going on with that? Well, I, the, the, uh, my last show that I had on WIP, I thought he was going to die. Oh, yeah, Literally on the true. air. That, he was yeah. in the hospital and all the alarms are going off because he, was, he needed oxygen. And uh, yeah. so I, I I I got his number and I, I wanted to check on him. I felt like I, I he was he was dead. And, so and he does it. sound so much better now. He is like doing really well. So that 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 made me happy because I, I heard him when he got healthy and got back on. He was spry, and that was good. Um, so Johnny Marks, you you have to split the billing this evening because I got somebody on tonight. And I, you know, I, if you don't know, in my other life, I am O doctor. I am a doctor. I am the number one advisor on the internet. I am a therapist. Uh, you know, therapy daddy, not sugar daddy, but somebody we got to get on this couch and find out why they're so angry all the time. The mad rapper himself, Mad Mike, say what's up to the people, what's man. What's going Mike? on, everybody? How we doing? Hey, Mike. How you doing, Johnny Marks? Good, man. Hi, life's treating you well? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's great not having to work. Absolutely. Good. Yeah. I wish I could do that. Uh, definitely uh, could not convince my wife to just not let me work definitely would uh cause some problems here in the the no the the household the mad mike household the mad mike household well uh fun fact about mad mike because i i've i've insulted you many times calling in after you <laughs> talking about how you must gang bang at birthday parties you wake up angry at christmas <laughs> like is there any kind of joy in your life and i found out you know when i was talking to mike last week and he asked to come on the show i was like oh sure come on the show this week and he's like, oh, I'm on vacation. And I was like, you take vacations? Mad Mike out in the world in Mexico having a vacation. This yeah, man, is I was having me. drinks by the pool. It was nice. It, it, you know, was look, if I didn't see you right now on this camera, I wouldn't believe you had a smile on your face. See, I bring up Cancun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was nice, man. 
It was nice. I didn't even have to pay for it either. My wife's company, they uh they took the, all the people on vacation. So uh this shout out to Rittenhouse Builders. Thanks for the uh free vacation. Johnny Marks take notes, uh wife that gets free vacations to take us. Nice. Yeah, so so you do you do you just need alcohol to be in a better mood? Are you uh, are you one of these guys who give you a, a drink and a half and all of a sudden it loosens you up and you're feeling good? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not a huge drinker, so if you uh you give me a co- every once in a while, I have a cocktail, and uh, yeah, the turns turns that frown upside down. Uh, I don't trust that at all. I feel like this is the guy who might be punching holes in walls and starting a bar fight, getting us kicked out of parties. The, no, the mic no. I hear on the radio, I don't know if I want to give him a drink, Johnny. You know what I'm saying? I I don't know if he deserves a that drink. <laughs> What about a, a gummy, gummy man, Mike? I mean, it's I've never, illegal. never had a gummy. I can't, I can't say. I think my wife would uh, frown on that a little bit, but we'll. See. I don't know. Really? No, it's, it's not legal now. We got to get these gummies in. Yeah, but um, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm. I feel like I don't know. I just get real, real intense about the sports. Other than that, outside of that, I'm pretty chill. So, so um, before Johnny Marks, if you think about a question for him while I'm thinking, I'm asking this question before we get started about our sports talk tonight because this is a sports talk show, but. When's when's the first time you were happy and joyous about being a Philadelphia fan? Because everybody says you're a Cowboys fan, you're just a troll, like you don't believe in the Sixers. Like, tell me a joyous moment when you just loved the team and the sport. Give me a time when Mad Mike was like, the Eagles. Like, give me give me one time when you were just happy. All right, so I remember when uh, you the Eagles were playing the Dallas Cowboys, and it was it was like like late '90s, and I think it was uh, there was like the game was in doubt, and there was a late interception. I think it was Will James Willis had the interception lateral with Detroit Vince. Yeah, yeah, and like I remember that they that they were started the season then like seven and two. And I was like, this is awesome. Best thing I ever saw. Like such a, such a great moment. And, and, you know, I feel like I've been chasing that high ever since. And then, uh, you know, it, I feel like Mad Mike really wasn't born until after the Super Bowl run. Like I wasn't really that, that frustrated until after that. And then we had this moron GM that just stole the team and started tanking draft picks all over the place. And I just wanted, I just wanted him fired. That's all. I just, and like the only way to affect change was for things to go totally wrong. And so I've been rooting for that chaos ever since. (laughs) Okay. So so I'm trying trying to quickly, uh, Oh, and to uh, gritty to, to pull up the, pull up his Twitter because unless he deleted the tweet, he was, he was gooey after they won the Super Bowl. Oh. You would never, you would never know that Mad Mike is now Mad Mike with how he behaves on the radio. Yeah, well, he, yeah, was yeah. Gooey, he was gooey after the Super Bowl. He was so happy. I he hasn't been happy before. I was elated. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm, well, that's good. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that you gave me a time that wasn't the Super Bowl. Because if you would have started giving me, I was happy about the Super Bowl. I would have cut your mic because I, I don't care. Every, everybody is happy at the Super Bowl. Like I, I wanted the story like what you gave. I wanted a tangible time where you were just like, man, yeah. I love the team. Oh, so, no, man. There was, like, a time I was, like, super hardcore, like, for the longest time, like, through through thick and thin. Like, there was always just, like... When they got T.O., you weren't happy when they got Terrell Owens? I loved when they got Terrell Owens. Okay. That was great. Like, they... Well, you remember, it was that week they got Terrell Owens and Javon Curse all in the same week, and it was, like, Christmas. So, like, it was it was amazing. Wow. See, this, this is the Mad Mike the world needs to hear. Like, knowing that you're, like, you're a fan, you're pulling mm-hmm. up dates and time, your recall is good. So, yeah. you know what I mean? I, at least I can defend you now when somebody says, oh, he's a Cowboys fan, you know? Yeah, he's- no, I'm definitely not a Cowboys fan. Like, I, honestly, it's just like this Joker persona that I've adopted to uh, to root and affect, like, get change. And, like, really just the chaos is the only way I could see it happening is, like, things just completely break down and like the Jeffrey Lurie has to cut bait with that that little weasel nerd that like just has he's you know like I'm kind of a Disney guy like my family loves to go to Disney he you know who he is he's Jafar he's Jafar from the Aladdin movies where like he had kind of like control over the Sultan and like yeah you know, like had yeah, that magic that's that's how he's a, he's a little little Weasley troll Howie is a he's a survivor he's a weasel. Mm-hmm. He will do anything he can to uh, to 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 keep his job, right? I think mm-hmm. we've seen it. 
Yeah, I do. Well, um, I, I and mean, and you know what? And you know what, Mike? He's done his best work when his back's up against the wall, similar to this season. Well, I have a theory on Howie. There's two Howies, right? There's there's back up against the wall Howie, and then there's prideful, I'm a football guy Howie. So, like, back up against the wall Howie, he, he does some things, and he's pretty good at bringing in free agents and doing stuff. But then once he starts doing things well – he gets his head he gets his head all full of like I'm a football guy and he starts making stupid decisions and it's real cyclical you can even watch it like right after the super bowl and everything that's when he was like the prideful I'm a fo- I'm a real football guy it's it's super cyclical with Howie. good Johnny. No, I, do. he, he, I think he gets full of himself after they have success mm-hmm. and he, he he has an ego yeah. and he gets full of himself and he is arrogant and you see it, you hear it in interviews mm-hmm. and then he almost needs to be knocked down a peg to be where it's like, hold on a second, dude. Like you, you're, you're this, you're this far away from not being the GM at the Eagles. I don't believe he has a deal for, I don't believe he has a job for life, by the way. Well, I think when, when Jeffrey Lurie's son finally takes over, I think that will be the end of Howie Roseman. Well, first of all, I, if, if it takes that long, unless I won like nine Super Bowls, that's far too long. So let me just reel this back in real quick. Long story short, Howie Roseman, is an Instagram uh, tax refund person. The tax refund time, they go out and they get a car, they got jewelry, they eating steak and lobster, they're telling you everything that they got going and they balling in their life. When you don't pay a quarterback, Howie Roseman is elite. Once he pays a quarterback and his cover gets bare and times get rough, this fool don't know how to make a, a steak dinner out with ramen noodles. He only no. knows one way to build. And once he pays that quarterback, he turns into who he really is because all the magic and, and all that stuff it's easy to do when you're balling out of control you know what what i got one kid you got three kids johnny marks i i could do a lot more fun stuff than you could do at a lot cheaper rate because i only got to take one little rug rat with me once you're taking two and three and four and five the, the the pot changes and that's what howie's problem is he can't mix and master when the times are tough he can't handle that pressure and put a team together so that being said uh i'll start with you johnny marks do you do you like the coaches. How do you feel about our coaches hires? I, I, I'm fine with the coordinator. They needed a veteran guy. We can we can complain. Oh well, you know, look at what happened to the, the Chargers this year, or whatever. I mean, honestly, I even Googled it. I couldn't find any real evaluation of, of Kellen Moore with the Chargers, whether he did a good job or he didn't do a good job this year. I I, I can't blame him for the lack of success the Chargers had this year. I saw him in Dallas. Uh, you know, he, he has years of play calling experience and that's what this team needs right now. Brian Johnson was ill equipped to handle what they, what was going on last year. The league adjusted to the Eagles offense, their basic offense, the league adjusted to Jalen Hurts in this offense and the Eagles didn't have a counter and Jalen struggled on top of it. So getting an experienced play caller in there and honestly a different offense with motion, uh, the chargers were eighth in motion last year and the Eagles were dead last. No, they they need they need a professional offense. They didn't have it last year, uh, so that's the offensive coordinator. And as far as, far as Vic Fangio, whatever, I don't care. I mean, their, their personnel sucks, and they need different personnel. Vic Fangio plays this boring style, so all the people out there that want blitzing on every down, that ain't going to happen. He's not going to blitz, but he's going to be a more professional coordinator than Sean Desai or even Matt Patricia. So like, but whatever, their, their, their personnel sucks on defense. So I, I, I can't look at the, the defensive side of the ball and be happy, even with Vic, Vic Fangio there, whatever with Vic Fangio defense isn't going to be good next year. Mike. So here's my thing. Uh, Kellen Moore was this like his third offensive coordinator job. And, and generally in this league, if you're a, a offensive coordinator worth anything, you, if you've got like a couple of years experience, you would have already been offered a head coach position now he's on his third offensive coordinator job. It just seems to me like the league doesn't think as highly of him as they might have used to. So, like, now you're getting some retread offensive coordinator in here. And then the defensive coordinator, like, I'm not overwhelmed by the fact that he's been in the league for, like, 40 years at this point. I I start to wonder about that, too. Like, it's not – I don't know. Vic Fangio just – I don't know if the game is – maybe passed him by at this point. I, I'm not really overwhelmed by either of these two picks. I just don't know who, if you're not going to have, if you don't hire more, who are you hiring? You're hiring a similar 
similar type coach, right? Like unless you're taking a shot on a young quarterbacks coach mm -hmm. or offensive assistant, but I mean, really isn't, isn't that what we don't want in an offensive coordinator that we just had last year, but a guy didn't have any experience. So at least you have a guy. I actually think it's a good hire. I do. I, I don't like, I, I don't know. Like who, are you going to bring in the enemy? Like who are the other guys you were going to hire if it wasn't Kellen Moore? I mean, I think mm -hmm. we're splitting hairs by complaining about Kellen Moore. The guys out there were who the guys were out there. The real problem is that the head coach, this is, you're not going to have his offense anymore. And he's an offensive head coach. Well, that's, that's the real problem with the team. I need the, 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 focus. I'm running the show. <laughs> the coordinators. Stay on track. Right. Well, uh, uh, hold on. Okay. Jason, yes or no on these coordinators? You happy? No, I'm not uh, overwhelmed at all by that. I think Fangio's system is outdated. I think the league has adjusted to it, and everybody's the new San Francisco Mike McDaniel Shanahan type deal is uh, it counters that defense, and teams can't stop it. Kellen Moore is going to be better than Brian Johnson was. His route tree is more uh, diverse. We got more motion, more plays, and hopefully they can beat a blitz. Bye, Jason. <laughs> Hold on. Harry, are, are you happy? Happy, happy is a strong word to use. I would not say that, but I mean, ultimately, you know, I, I definitely agree with Johnny Marks here in terms of offensive coordinator. Like, what were we going to do? You know, so at least this guy's coming from, you know, playing having Herbert. At least he had some elite, you know, talented quarterback. Obviously, Herbert hasn't proven it yet, but um, to the fullest extent. But I like that he's coming from these two organizations where he's had chances to work with some talented offensive players, at least, and he can maybe implement some things here. Defensively, I mean, you know, I guess this is almost like a. I don't want to say rock bottom, but this is like the ultimate. Like, all right, like we have all these Fangio disciples, right? That have been but at failing. least you got to, okay. Perry, I'm about to kick go. Ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Your thunder. Uh, so, <laughs> at least if you want the 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 king of the umbrella, right? Like everybody goes underneath the tree. You want the top of the tree. So now for Howie, and he loves this style of defense. You got the guy that created the style of defense that you love. So if it doesn't work this way, it's not going to work anyway. Because sometimes you know the disciple ends up being better. The pupil becomes the teacher. But in this instance, it just keeps getting watered down and watered down. Gannon did what he did. He got himself a good job. Good for him. But now there's no excuse. You got the guy who created it. And Miami's out here kicking rocks on Instagram and trashing him as a coach. He seems out of touch. He's not in with the new crowd. He doesn't know what hip-hop is. Like, it's just a whole <laughs> to do. And as far as Kellen Moore is concerned, guess what? We're going to talk about the Super Bowl and the, and the championship game, but I just watched two – highly sought after offensive OCs that forgot to run the fucking ball. And I know that Kellen Moore is not going to do it. So don't tell me that this motion and all stuff's going to happen. Because when the rubber hits the road, he's going to do what all these other dudes do is piss down his leg because that's what scared guys do. So we got him. I'm happy. We got somebody. Like I said, who else are you going to get? I probably wouldn't have been happy with nobody except for the enemy because that was my personal pick. But he's also a begrudging and probably would have pissed you off. Uh, short story before I get to the next thing. Jalen Hurts, I don't even know if he can run the kind of stuff that Kellen Moore's won. Have you seen Jalen Hurts under center? I haven't. He's really short. The line's really big. We're going to find out what happens. Now we can move on to your head coach comments, uh, Johnny Marks and Matt Mike, whoever wants, who wants to go first, talking about our coach that's just lame duck coach. and doesn't do it. I, I love it. I I, actually, I I think it's hilarious because it's kind of my thesis statement on, on how, who Howie Roseman is. Like, of course, Howie Roseman brings in this puppet, this, like, dummy puppet that has no business being a head coach at all and he's talking about flowers and and wearing stupid t-shirts and mugging for the camera like a moron and, and immediately loses all power just like has no power he's just a yes man and it's it's exactly what howie roseman wants in a coach just some figurehead moron that's just happy to get a, a check and and just glad to stand there so howie can have the the offensive defensive coordinator just like kind of report into him like it's 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 exactly what Howie wants to insulate Howie so that Howie can have as much power as he wants. Classic, yeah, by Johnny Marks. Yeah, I, it, it's um, you know, one thing they haven't done is they haven't looked to bring in a bona fide since Chip Kelly because Chip, Chip Kelly took his job. You can see why Howie wouldn't want to bring in a guy that could potentially come in and 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 try to take over the job. Now he did. Wasn't he? Wasn't he the one that liked Josh McDaniels? Yeah. And Jeffrey Lurie kind of overruled him. If you think about this, right? Like think about some of the head coaches that the Eagles tried to get and missed. They were interested in in, in that idiot that, that ended up going to the Giants. He used the, e the Eagles for leverage, and he ended up staying with the Giants. What's his name? Um, Debo. Is that who you're talking about? No, the the he had the brill cream in the hair. The the um. 
he he benched he benched Eli Manning and uh, oh, oh god, what is I can never name? I can never remember his name. I, can remember his name. I know exactly what you're talking about. I can see yeah. it in my mind. But they tried. They, they were interested in him, and he used the Eagles as leverage, and he he signed to be the head coach of, of the Giants. And they were Terry Roseman wanted Josh McDaniels to be the head coach. So how how would that have worked out in Philadelphia, right? But I guess to your point, they do feel more comfortable with a guy like Nick Sirianni. It's almost like I look at it like how baseball's run these days, and you look at Gabe Kapler when he's with the Phillies. Gabe Kapler wasn't making any decisions. Gabe Kapler, whatever whatever they were telling him upstairs with analytics and and what the lineup should be, be or whatever, he was following whatever they were doing. And Rob Thompson, I think, to a to a little bit lesser ben degree, McAdoo. is doing the same thing. Ben McAdoo, that's yes, it. Ben McAdoo. Shout out to Jason, a producer. See, that's why you have a producer. But 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 my point is that that I, I it, it doesn't feel like to me it's it, even in football now where these these guys want to control everything from upstairs, right? So they hire they hire a defensive coordinator. It's like everybody reports to him, Howie and Jeffrey Lurie. And like, I mean, I, I, when you don't have the Andy Reeds, when you don't have those top coaches, then this is what the or, these organizations want to do. And guess what, Mad Mike? And guess what, Black Gritty? This team won a Super Bowl in 2018, and they went back to a Super Bowl. We're that close to winning the Super Bowl last year, and they started out 10 and one. So you can't argue that it hasn't worked. Now, I can argue that. Afterwards. I can argue no, that. No, no, you can't because they won a Super Bowl. They they were nearly going back with a backup quarterback. To the NFC Championship game the following year, they were in the playoffs the year after that. Carson Wentz got hurt, or they probably beat the Seahawks right there, and then it blew up in their face. But let's not act like this is the Cleveland Browns circa 1990 and 2000 and 2010. This has been a very successful franchise doing it this way. Yeah, okay. Well, if you want to go back to that original Super Bowl, a lot of those players were Andy Reid brought in players. So you, you had a, fa- a foundation based off you know Reid. And, and Chip and, Kelly. And Chip Kelly. But and mercenaries so, that they brought yeah, in on one-year yeah. contracts. And, and and Howie Roseman's good at mercenaries. He's good at free agents. He's good at knowing who's in the league. He's not good at knowing who's outside of the league. And that's that's his big downfall. But then I'd also also say last year was a mirage, Johnny. Like last that whole run to the Super Bowl was a complete fraud mirage. And I, I was saying that to you on the radio because – and anybody that would listen, they played nobody. They didn't play any solid quarterbacks. They got into the playoffs – they didn't they what they played a Giants team and then a San Francisco team that lost their quarter, but they didn't play it was an anybody. I mean, it was it, that's why I knew this team was set up for a problem this year. And they started leaking oil immediately out of the gate and they got to 10 and one and all the morons in the Delaware Valley. And, yeah, I'm calling them morons believed in all this stupid hype and they believed in this moron head coach. And the wheels fell off, and it was exactly what I thought was. I, I didn't expect it to happen that way, but I knew it was. A, it was all a mirage. So let let me just help you out, Mad Mike, and just be more concise. The Philadelphia Eagles won a Super Bowl on the magical, luckiest thing that could ever happen. When you lose your franchise quarterback that led you to thirteen and three, and then Nick Foles comes in, who has had a, a role in the league in twenty seven and two, and all the things you remember, but for him to go on that run, lead you to the Super Bowl, great. For him to walk into any stadium in America and go toe to toe, blow for blow with Thomas Edward Brady against Bill Belichick, my God, it'll never happen again. One in one billions of a chance that that happens. The luckiest run and miracle and joyous moment of my lifetime. The only time I've cried over a fucking football game. So thank you, but lucky. Then last year, they did play nobody. You had to end up going against Daniel Jones. And then uh, he, they earned it because they sacked him, but you took out the quarterback. Then you took out the second quarterback. And then you shined and you showed proof when you went toe-to-toe with the Chiefs and you still lost because your coach lost his balls after you had him all year long. So you come back this year, you have a tough schedule. Not for nothing. They beat five of seven playoff teams in the gauntlet. And they, they were the only team beating everybody with 500. But when the wheels fell off, they fucking fell off. So when luck is on your side, yes, you can walk through what. And I'm tired of hearing people say, this coach has took me to three playoff se- seasons in a row. Well, guess what? Two of those years, you got the dog shit kicked out of you in the first fucking round. And then one, you lucked up and walked the damn Jones and two nobody quarterbacks and McCaffrey is quarterback to get to the Super Bowl. So, yeah, he took me to three playoff series. It's not as sexy as it feels like when Howie says it. Sorry. Yeah, they, they've been in the playoffs six or seven seasons. I mean, let, let's take the emotion out of it. I know that we're knee deep, and we know we well, we I'm know the kidding. details a lot closer than, than than anybody else. But I mean, who 
look around. What what team what what team other than the Chiefs? Doesn't do this. Who are the other lead lead organizations in football right now? I'm just going to ask you. Who, who are the other top teams in football right now? Just to, just to answer your question. I'm, I, I, I was channeling my inner man, Mike. I told you I was doing it for Mike. Right. <laughs> but uh, in general, what you said is true. But when I watch the Patriots ruin most of my adult life in football, and then I have the Eagles ascending like they do and never getting to the top. And yes, we got over the hump. Great. But then now I have to deal with the Chiefs and my old girlfriend doing exactly what the Patriots did to me for 20 years. And I get to sit here and say, well, at least we're not the Browns and we're a good organization. This organization acts like they're the Patriots. They act like they're the Chiefs and they're not. You mean they're not the gold standard? Yeah, they're not the gold standard. Who said that? (laughs) All right, so, so give, me, give, me the, give me better franchises in the NFL right now. So I so I don't like this argument, and it's just like, yeah, okay, we can compare. There's dregs and there's worse, and that's that's great. But, like, I don't want to compare myself to the dregs. I want to bring well, myself up to the elite. Give me the elite franchise. I mean, I, there you go. The Patriots were the, were the elite team for the longest time. Now you have were. Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs are the elite team. But, like, Johnny – you're never going to be an elite franchise if you have if you if your GM is so afraid they to did. have a real but they, you haven't though it's 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 success that you've lucked into and it's not it's and it's all mercenary driven it's not that you built through the draft you brought in a bunch of guys when you had low low quarterback salaries like gritty said earlier and then you bring in a bunch of mercenaries and then the wheels fall off when you have to pay the quarterback and then you go through this cyclical thing where your your team's never like riding high because you don't know how to handle yourself so that's that's not elite to me in any way that's just dumb luck and, no and, it, and, it's it's it, i mean let, let me just say this that the, every every franchise has their strengths and weaknesses, right? Like you, you, Mike, you, I, I was waiting for someone to say the Steelers. When's the last time the Steelers won a playoff game? You know what I mean? Oh, like I, they draft, they develop, but they struggle to, to, to draft on the offensive line. They're great at drafting linebackers. They're great at drafting wide receivers. They can draft wide receivers all over the place. Each franchise has strengths and weaknesses. The Eagles have strengths as a franchise. The Steelers have strengths as a franchise. But when you, when you put it all together, there's not many teams in the NFL. There's not many franchises in the NFL better than the Eagles. And I know that's hard for people right now to accept. It's true because so, you guys don't have answers. And and, I, and I'll say that that's fine to you. But I'll define success as Andy Reid going to championship games, win or lose, multiple times in a row backing them up. The Patriots going for four or five years in a row and then dropping out for – they didn't go to the Super Bowl for 10 years, but they were in championship games. They just would lose them. And then I look at the Chiefs, and they're in six championship games. Like, when you're – even the 49ers, you want to talk about a franchise, the 49ers, they've been to a lot of Super Bowls. They've been in NFC championship games. They've been a consistent measure, and they're one quarterback away, but they don't fall off a cliff. The fact that I'm living the same nightmare after winning the Super Bowl and reading the same headlines, turmoil, stupid coach, Howie Roseman, uh, Jeffrey Lurie meddling, literally the same things – Two years and a year removed, it's like, where's my consistency if I'm a great model of organization? The 49ers, Jimmy, porn star Jimmy, or fall off a cliff. Guess what? The 49ers are still there. Defense is still there. You know why? Because they have a guy leading the ship that calls the plays. Uh, uh, coordinators that call the plays and run their offenses have, have won in, are in the Super Bowl. The, the CEO guy. Matter of fact, let's go out to the Eagles. I'm tired. I'm, I'm tired of being mad. Let's talk about championship weekend. And let's talk about these dang gum. I'm going to start with... The Lions. I hate the. As a matter of fact, Johnny Mars, how do you think about the Lions 49ers game? What do, what do you think about that? Uh, it's an all time collapse. They were up 24 to 7 at the at the ha- half. It's an all time collapse. It, it sucks because I have family in suburban Detroit. I was rooting for the Lions. They, um, we you know, are they, all Lions. America. No, I know. And like you felt good for the city. They haven't won a playoff game since 1991. And like, like we, we were, we, a lot of people talked about this. It is so difficult to get back. And I'm sure a lot of the Lions players right now feel like, oh, we'll be back. No, you're not. You're not You're not going to be back next year. You're not going to be in the Super Bowl next year. This was your freaking chance. Just like it was the Eagles' chance last year and they blew it. This was the Lions' chance. And, like, listen, Dan, Dan Campbell, he can he can go with the this is what got us there or, like, why would we change right now that he's the most aggressive coach on fourth down because the situation dictates that you don't have to always go for it on fourth down. You needed some points there on that, on those field goals. So he, yeah, but, that, it. 
that kicker was like fifty percent from that range. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't automatic. You were getting those points. I, I think you weigh that uh, that option. And 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 I'll say this: the 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 quarterback, uh, and he's just escaping me right now. Jared um, Goff. Garrett, Garrett Goff. He, uh, he he seems to have like grown up and grown, you know, from that dummy first year quarterback to. I think he's like. I think he's, he's got a few good years in him now. Like, and I think he's kind of grown. So I wouldn't dismiss them as an up and coming team in the in next year either. And Ben think, Johnson's not leaving now, apparently. Yeah. So he's staying. So, I mean, I mean, I think, I think this team could be on the rise or at least have a couple, two more years of, of, of you know, good football out of them at least. So, so before I go on another rant, let me just jump in there and piggyback on both what you said. First of all, Johnny Marks, apparently, if we're a good organization, it shouldn't be hard for us to get back there because we're a model franchise and this wasn't luck. So you saying that the Eagles might not get back there, that's not what I was told. That's not what I've been sold, okay? Secondly, you can say that, Johnny Marks. You can say that, Bad Mike. My head coach comes out on the podium and says, I told these guys they were never going to get there again. It is hard to get there. Jared Goff's like, bro, I already been to the Super Bowl, homie. Like, I was in one. You ain't. I, 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 was, I was there. People forget that Jared Goff, young and dumb or whatever he was, he got his team to a Super Bowl. Uh, I, I, I know they got rid of him. He went to one. And CJ DJ, like, yo, bro, I, I was in the Super Bowl last year. Like, what you mean we ain't getting back? What kind of confidence builder is that, kneecap biter? You going to come out like this little punk like that? And they kicked the field goal before the half, and they got that field goal. He should have kept kicking them damn field goals until he missed one. Uh, man, I, I fully understand what you're saying. But kick the fucking field goal, bro. Like, I don't give a shit. And you ran the ball 21 times, 148 yards. And what I said to start the show off, run the ball. You ran the ball seven times in the second half, and you deserve to get beat. And my last thing I want to say, so I can clip this for the internet, I'm telling you directly, this is just for the internet. I've been thinking about it all day in my mind. I'm tired of you pump 49ers in my damn DMs and follow me. I appreciate the following the views. I don't care if they're hating views. I appreciate you. But I'll tell you what. He is a manager. He is a punk. He is a loser. And he will be that until he wins the Super Bowl. He goes and wins the Super Bowl against Patrick Holmes. I'll give him his respect. But until then, he is a doofus and a scaredy cat. He played like a trash in that whole first half. And if they weren't going against a kneecap moron, he'd still be sitting home <laughs> on the couch and get through like the Philadelphia Eagles. So your Brock Purdy is a piece of trash until you shows me he can go out there and beat Taylor Swift. I mean, Patrick Mahomes. And it's not going to happen. And Buss is going to be crying like a little punk bitch again online. Anywho, uh, so the Ravens... <laughs> <laughs> so wait, wait, wait. I don't know. How can you have a problem with Brock Purdy? Like, I mean, like, the guy was... It's time seven- to give it up. I know, but like, all right, you you kind of got to root for a guy that comes in the league as seventh, seventh round pick. Like, I mean, come on. Like, give me something here. <laughs> root for him? Root... Do you, do you want to see Patrick Mahomes win and Taylor Swift win one, or would you rather see the Niners and Brock Purdy? I don't want to see Taylor Swift like swag surfing in the at the freaking top of uh, watching this game. I don't want that. Like if I had the lesser of two evils, it's the Niners for me at this You're point. You're out of your mind. <laughs> no, no. The fact that I have to deal with the 49ers in my conference and I had to hear them cry about the Eagles for over a year is an issue for me. Secondly, yes, uh, besides Andy Reid alone. I personally, more than anything in my life, I, I could call, I could, I'm not going to do it because I'm busy right now. I could call any woman in my life that I've dated or hooked up with. If I say the name Tom Brady, you know what they say? Fuck Tom Brady, he's a scumbag. I don't care if they dated me for a week. I train them on that so they can go spread it in the ocean. I hate Tom Brady. I hate the Patriots. They cheated me out of my Super Bowl with Terrell Owens, so fuck them. And guess what? Patrick Mahomes is going out there and breaking up his legacy. The new GOAT is already on the way, so get him another Super Bowl. If it can't be me, let it be Patty. Jerry Rice, who? Who's Jerry Rice? Now it's Travis Kelsey. He got all his rewards, got all his receptions. So, yes, I hate the 49ers now. I used to love the 49ers. Joe Montana was my GOAT always and forever. But now let it go be Patrick Mahomes because if I got to hear Brady for the rest of my life, I might as well die tomorrow. So, no, Brock Purdy. He's a seven-round wonder, and, again, I don't need another Tom Brady coming into my life, being some underhook punk, getting away with <laughs> murder because he's got 30. a great team around him. And I told you, we're talking about the Ravens and the Chiefs right now. So, John Mark, how did you feel about that game? I, I uh, feel like the – oh, sorry. Sorry, I didn't mean to step on you there. No, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. I, I, I just think, that, like, it's, it's shocking to me that the Ravens, like – forgot to run like they they had that they could if they had just run the ball they would have won that game i mean how many times like they they like they 
they would run and they would they would do well and then they're like let's do some stupid passes and like like i was just like just run the freaking ball man <laughs> just run it yeah the, the the mvp of that game steve spagnola on that defense he's got a he has got a good defense that the line the defensive backfield uh and mm. they took away it, lamar jackson loves the intermediate routes he's actually very good and accurate throwing intermediate uh throws and they took it away from him they said you're not going to beat us at the line of scrimmage with throws you're not going to beat us on, on anything 10 yards and in and you saw him he was holding the ball because he had to wait for for guys to get open and, and for routes to develop and that's not where he is at his best he's not a rhythm passer he's not throwing the spots and then they were getting to him and they had they, they pressured him so i mean really the zay flowers fumble was a killer mm-hmm. and and the penalty that they took that he that that the 15 year penalty that he took the taunting penalty but like the fumble was a killer, and Lamar can't throw that interception, right? Like no. that was oh, a no, no. that was a killer. And that was a tight game. That was a well. That was a that was a tight game with two really good teams, and the Ravens made the mistakes the Chiefs didn't. And I, I think the Ravens are going to win the Super Bowl. Not to not to uh, or the Ravens. The, the uh, Chiefs are going to win the Super Bowl. I think that defense is is really just that good. So I go Spags MVP. Well, I mean, he kind of was the MVP last year, too. I mean, that that defense last year in the Super Bowl really, you know, it shocked Jalen Hurts. And, like, he, you saw him get real kind of, like, you know, in the second half. Like, they, they were doing things, and they were, they were getting to Jalen Hurts, and it was, it was throwing him off his game last year, too. Mike, I won't allow you to come in here and pamper Purdy and then slander my quarterback. Just relax with that. <laughs> you lost the game by three points, Mike. My coach didn't go for it on fourth down. Jalen Hurts went toe-to-toe, blow for blow. Just watch your slander when you want to talk about that. that that's just embarrassing for you. Stop it. The, the internet's black. Don't say anything, Mike. Just sit there and take it. You are, so This is what happens when I listen to Matt Mike on the radio. He says something to me. I get so mad. Then I got to call in, and I'm yelling at the radio. And Johnny Mark, that's sit there and listen to me. But right now, I'm telling you, Jalen Hurts – and, and Spagno, now, see, you made me mad. Let me focus, recalibrate. Spags won that game. Your offense only put up 17 points. The Ravens' defense is really good. But Mahomes made the plays when he needed to make the play, the big cat, the big pass, MVP. So, it, but the defense this year has come undone everything that they wanted to do. And guess what? Last year when those rookies were out there playing us, by the way, Mad Mike, they were holding us and we weren't getting penalty calls and they were late in the game. So just throw that into your little book about how the defense held Jalen and threw him up for a switch. Like we weren't getting calls. You watched the game hopefully more than once because I did too. I don't want to claim about the rest, but I'm just saying it wasn't fair or equal treatment when it came to that, okay? Again, the guy cried all year about calls. Now he's getting all the calls in the playoffs and I had nothing to say. He ain't got nothing to say. He cried little tears on the thing. And again, it's only because I wanted to be better than Tom Brady and I get that out of my ethos that I'm cheering for this man. But Spags is out here doing it. How can you root for Kermit the Frog and his moron wife? Like, I can't – I like, those two drive me – like, first of all, I don't ever want to hear that guy talk. And, like, I definitely don't want to see his stupid wife ever again. Like, so, I'm sorry. There's so many reasons why I don't want the Chiefs to win. And a lot of them have to do with the wives and girlfriends of these stupid players. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm fine with that. But you really, you want the 49ers to win? I, I don't have a problem those, with the those 49ers. dirt bags out there. No, like I I got a I got a personal thing with the with the morning show uh, out there on. Uh, on I don't have any vendettas again. There. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, like to be those fair, guys we, are bad we, dudes we, and losers. We, we were saying we like they were crying. Like we we sound like we're crying a little bit too about some stuff. So I've oh, no, like, no, 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 no doubt about it. I'm just no, saying. I mean, we, the, be real the difference like, is all state of spade here. We like I see a lot of Philadelphia people crying about the, the 49ers. The, I I, it, I literally said holding calls on both sides. Ours weren't called, theirs were. I'm pointing out general things. I didn't bring up the field. I didn't say anything about the field and all that raining and all that raven. I didn't cry about the field. These guys, cry, if we had our quarterback, and I'm like, if you blocked for him, like tell me you blocked for the guy. Tell me right. that you accounted for it after you saw him get blitzed. The first two plays of the game, you did it. That's bad coaching. That's bad play design. That's not my fault. And then to cry about it and have Debo go on National Row Radio and just talk trash about players stuff like that. And cool, you came back and you won the regular season. You kicked their ass. I'm not saying they didn't. But to say that that team is not a bunch of punks, losers, their fan base are weirdos, I, I, Matt, Mike, uh, you're not out here in these streets. I'm telling you, every single day, I get DMs from guys sending me videos about Brock Purdy and all these other people. I don't seek these people out. Just because I'm an Eagles fan, they want to. T- that's how because they're still hurt about how they lost last year. So there is a difference, uh, Matthew, Mad Mike. I, I, it's different. It's different. Uh, oh, Matthew. 
I'm just making up stuff now because you made me right. mad because that's the job. Well, that's um, what I do, man. I'm, I'm an instigator at heart. Who's winning the Super Bowl, man, Mike? Uh, I, I, I'm probably going to lean towards the Chiefs. I don't want it to happen, but I think if I'm in my mind, I think the Chiefs win it. So at least you're not a loser. You're a smart man. I mean, I was going to call you a loser if you pick the losers, but you picked the Chiefs. So I definitely think the NFL is going to get behind that, and there's going to be a lot of calls the, uh, the Chiefs way. So I, my last question, I'm going to get on to basketball. And uh, I'm checking my time. I don't even know what time it is. Having too much fun. So before I get to that, uh, Matt, Mike, you have a, a children, right? You have a daughter. I have a daughter who wrestles. Like, do you, yeah. don't you have a daughter who wrestles? Yeah, my daughter wrestles. So, we're, and I have a four-year-old son. Yeah. Uh, so you got the two. And Johnny Marks has three lovely daughters. That my daughter, who is a, um, she loves the kids. So randomly, because she, she knows Johnny Marks, she'll sit there. She'll say, "Go to Johnny Marks' page. I want to see his daughters." Maybe like once every two weeks or so, because Johnny, you pop up on my TVs from like us going out to events and stuff like that. Like all my TVs are Google TV. So they just show yeah. pictures of things we've done. So she's like, oh, go show me his kids. I'm like, just tell me you want to go babysit. He, I'm sure he needs a babysitter. So just no doubt. Okay. But you can't add. afford it now, right? Uh, you know, I, I fairly nope. discount. I'll, I'll hook him up just to get it out right. of my hair for a little bit. But just so you know, Johnny Mark, she does randomly ask, like, pull. I'm like, he's, you can go follow him. She's like, I don't care about sports like that. I'm not gonna follow. I just want to see the girls and because you're always like cooking. Yeah, stuff. but I mean, how much sports do I do actually do on Instagram? No, uh, you don't. Not That's a lot. What I, I tried to tell her. I'm like, look, he's making banana. By the way, shout out. The last time you made pancakes, I had to have to go bake banana pancakes because you out there doing being a good dad. <laughs> and she saw that. And I end up. I just want to make regular old pancakes. I'm out here making fruit and stuff like a nice Caucasian father. Anyway, my point is, we're, we're fathers of daughters and other children. Yeah. And uh, the Taylor Swift thing, um, d- are you for it or against or indifferent, Johnny Marks? Well, I'm nauseated by the entire thing. Um, and, and like my 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 kids, my my eight year old, my six year old, they have Taylor Swift sweatshirts and they wear them to school with their little friends. They coordinate and they wear the Taylor Swift on the same day or whatever. So I was making fun of them the other night. I'm like, all right, well, so what's your favorite song? And they say, shake it off. I'm like, all right, what's your second favorite song? They can't name another song because they don't really <laughs> know anything other than Taylor Swift and she's cool. And I think that's most of America. Anybody that thinks she's cool really just doesn't know why, but it's supposed to be she's cool. No, I hate it. And frankly, I hate J- I hate Jason Kelsey being out there with his shirt off and all this other stuff too. How about that? Yeah, so I Jason agree. Jason Kelsey shirtless diving into, into the stands and, and then you have Taylor Swift up there and then, and then, and then uh, Jason's uh, uh, wife is all good morning America talking about the whole thing, right? Like, I mean, geez, give, 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 like, give me a chance to breathe and watch some football here without all this nonsense going on. I hate it. I hate the Taylor Swift stuff. I don't so, hate lose because of it. Hold on, Mike. Uh, Jason, you, you got the kids. Are you pro or, or, or against uh, the Taylor Swiftness? Oh, my kids all hate Taylor Swift. I'm pro Taylor Swift. Okay. So, see, <laughs> look, look, see I'm, I'm about to prove a point there. So, pro Taylor Swift. Now, do we got the, the youngest guy, youngest guy, happy birthday again. Shout out to Harry, turned Thank 29, you. about to be 30. Don't, I mean, just because he's yet. Not yet. <laughs> just because he's been like the Incredible Hulk, I'm not going to let him know. He's supposed to be 30 right now. I mean, I don't, he in the gym trying to work it off. But, it, you know, once you hit 30, Johnny Marks, you know how it is. Them nah, beers yeah. hit you different. But how do you feel about uh, Taylor Swift, Harry? Man, I mean, I'm I'm definitely sick of it. Uh, it's one of those things that it is a little bit fascinating, I would say, just because there's so many different aspects to it. Like Taylor Swift just became a billionaire and her, her tour is crazy. So like that whole angle with it is very I'm interesting. I'm going to finish one thing because you said that. Her cat has made twice as much as Travis Taylor. Travis Kelsey. Travis Taylor. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my God. Twice as much as <laughs> Travis Kelsey and his whole career. He's made $48 million his entire career. Her cat last year online made $90 million. Go ahead and finish, Harry. Oh my God. That's I'm about to pass out when you said that. <laughs> but uh no, basically, my 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 long game thoughts about it are that I don't think they're gonna stay together forever and get married. I really don't think so. They're in a very honeymoon phase situation right now. And I think that the fan base that is like supporting Taylor Swift right now, because it's mostly Chiefs fans, probably. And maybe some some Kelsey fans that are just you know tagging along. Then when Taylor Swift and, and Travis Kelsey break up, and she potentially writes an album about him, I'm very excited for the war of Taylor Swift fans and 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 football fans. So for me, I'm not into it right now at all. But I do think that it will end in a funny way for everybody. So you know, I'm I'll I'll, I'll ride it until you know it's over. Back on the bench, Harry. But great point about that. I appreciate that. Mad Mike, 
your thoughts as a father? Oh, uh, well, as a father, I think Taylor Swift music is music for people with head traumas. So like, I, I hate, I hate it. I, my, my wife, my daughter both love it. They, they rock that stuff pretty hard. So, but I mean, do, I mean, we were talking about this a little bit earlier, like, so she's made something like three hundred and thirty million dollars for like the NFL. Three hundred fifty-one million dollars for some, the Kansas City Chiefs, yeah. an NFL brand, and all major markets of her merch it's, and viewership. It's insane, and I mean, it, I mean, yeah, like the I could see like the fairy tale ending to this, where like they the the Chiefs win, he proposes to her at the end of the game, like the NFL would it's love that. Handball. No, he That's retires bad. first, and then they get married. But think I, I, about I, it. I, I, I believe that he's he's in love and it zapped it zapped him wanting to play football. I, I think Travis and Jason are gonna retire if he wins the Super Bowl. Well, yeah, because they're gonna have like that podcast. I mean, like they this is like their time to like really jump on it. I mean, like the the money they could probably make off a real successful podcast would dwarf e- e- what either of those two have made like pro in their pro career. Yeah. Okay, so just like men, you veered off topic. I'm focused on Taylor Swift right now in this moment in time. Yeah. About Taylor Swift. So now be quiet. I can go. I can go on my rant about Taylor Swift. First of all, I know I'm going to set aside the Taylor Swift AI stuff, which is disgusting. I'm going to put aside the media group political nightmare that's going on right now with the psyops and the the whole uh, Obama's wearing a tan suit, crazy people. I'm going to put all that aside and I'm just going <laughs> to keep it to football, okay? As far as football concerned, my daughter came and sat down next to me, we were watching the game, and she's like, I'm sick of Taylor <laughs> Swift. She loves Taylor Swift, but she hates the fact that she's involved with football. She said that she has to see the things on her TikToks and her memes. She's disgusted by it. She sent me a couple of videos today. They're hilarious, but I can't even share them with you because I don't want people to take it the wrong way. But my point is, when they sit there and they make these posts to say you know that as a father your child is sitting there watching you talk about bashing taylor swift and hating her you know what you're showing your daughter do you know what your daughter is seeing you as as a father do you understand what you're doing to women to which i say what i said earlier my daughter knows a bunch of things fuck the cowboys fuck the giants fuck the uh commanders and fuck tom brady he's a scumbag and tom brady's a wonderful guy other than him kissing his son on the lips i really don't really have any personal problems against the guy but Fuck them. And that's what my daughter knows. She's heard me say her whole, she was probably two years old the first time she jumped up and heard me say, fuck Tom Brady. So why in the world of sports can I not just say, I'm tired of seeing her on the screen. I ain't got to call out her name. When Travis Kelsey gets a touchdown, you know what I like to see? I like to see a corny white guy uncoordinated doing his little dance and shaking his butt and trying to do the gritty. But no, I get panned up to the booth and, and, and see happy work, work, work clapping. Uh, to what you said earlier with the wife, and, and the brother who's a weirdo on TikTok, I just want to watch the game. Show her going to the commercial break celebrating. But in the moment of the game when they score a touchdown, I would like to watch the touchdown. That's my problem with Taylor Swift because the play go to play, 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 play. I get that. You know what I mean? It's me. I, I'm the problem with me. I know the jazz. I got the abs. I, I got pulled over one time, bumping Taylor Swift. Cop pulled me over said, noise ordinance. I said, sir, I'm playing Taylor Swift. He said, there's no way you're playing Taylor Swift. Hit the play button. He's like, have a nice day. I'm just saying, I'm a fan, but I still don't want to see it during my games. Anything else before we move on? Well, I mean, it sounds like go Niners. Like then, I mean, you want you don't want to see that? <laughs> no, no. I've already, we've already discussed that. Um, so let's talk about uh 76. Let's clap your hands, Joel Embiid, MVP. Bro, uh, what do you, what do you think about him not playing in that game in Denver, Johnny Marks? I think he was hurt, and he's seven foot two, and he's got bad knees, and he didn't. He didn't play. He didn't play in Portland. I mean, what, what, I mean, what do you want him to do? I get it. It's a, it's a nationally televised game. It's against the Nuggets. Everybody wants to see him. People in Denver paid big money because they wanted to see Embiid and Jokic. He's hurt. He's got bad knees. I don't give a damn about some game in January. You can let him sit for the next week for all I care. I don't care about him winning the MVP. He's not going to be eligible. He's going to miss too many games. And whether you believe that's fair or not, I don't care. They need to get past the second round. They need to get to the conference finals. They need to get to the NBA finals. You're not going to do that by putting him out there when he's when he's gimping. They noticed it the previous game against the Pacers. He should have played in that game. But yeah, so I don't, give a, I don't give a damn. He didn't play. I don't care if he plays for the rest for February. The rest of the rest of this month and next month too. I don't care. Mike, I, I, Joel Embiid's to me. He's just like the biggest seven foot two fraud. Uh, like I mean, like yeah, he's got all this you natural guy. You know, Mike. What's that? 
He's putting up Wilt numbers. I don't I get, and then he'll get to the second round of the playoffs and he won't show up and he'll stink. Like this guy, like the, the book is out on this guy. He is a regular season phenom and he is nowhere to be found in the playoffs. And it, like, I'm tired of this guy too. I'm tired. Like this guy doesn't care about this game. He cares like about the money. He cares about the accolades. He does not care about the NBA. He didn't even want to play. He didn't even want to go to the camp that that in, back when he was in Africa for this. Like he just wanted to play FIFA. Like this guy does not care about the NBA at all. So I'm gonna to come to you, Jason and Harry, in a second. But first, I just one quick question. So, Mike, do you actually watch the playoffs at all for the Sixers? Oh, I, I I do. Not, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, so are, you, are you watching the regular seasons here too? I spot, I spot watch it like, like, where, like big games, yeah. big matches. Okay, I just want, yeah. I just wanted to check and see if you're actually watching games. Some people in that camp of, I'm not watching any games until they get to playoffs. Like a lot of my friends gave up their season <laughs> tickets. So I just wanted to ask that question. Mm-hmm. So let me. Uh, where's my mouse? I'm lost. My mouse. My mouse is gone. Harry, Harry now prefix. Harry loves the Sixers. <laughs> I mean, he would send me Ben Simmons uh, hype videos every summer until oh, he found well. me on the wagon. But I'm just saying. So <laughs> yeah, Ben Simmons is a fraud. I agree. I'm I'm done now, with Ben now, Simmons. But uh, now, now. I'm I'm I can't, shaking my head the whole time you're talking, Mad Mike. I'm just like, man, it's hurtful. I mean, like enjoy <laughs> enjoy something good that's in front of your face. Like this season with Joel has been so amazing to watch. You know, the book book is out on him in the sense that he's not healthy in the playoffs, right? And he doesn't show up. And he and I understand that. But again, the health is a huge factor in the playoffs as well as the coaching. Nick Nurse this year is a huge difference maker, I think. So I'm excited to see what happens. Again, him missing the game in playoffs, I, I mean, in Denver, excuse me. I think Ramona Shelburne reported saying that he was trying to play the whole time, right? And then they, they took him out 50 minutes because the training staff noticed the, the limp and he couldn't even jump. So I, you know, I give him a pass for that. He's prioritizing health, right? If he was prioritizing MVP and those types of things, he'd be trying to get out there no matter what, right, for these meaningless games. So... I think that this is the year with the culture change, with the with the vibes of the roster, Pat, Patrick Beverly, uh, Kelly Oubre, lots of dogs on the team. It's a very different, more mature team this year, and Joel seems more mature as well. So I'm very, again, I, I agree with the sentiment, like he has to do it in the playoffs. I totally agree. But I don't want to be miserable all year long when this man is dominating the NBA because I'm going to sit here and say, do it, in the, do it in the third round and not just in the you know first round or whatever. So Back I love bed, Joel Embiid, but he's balling. That's too much positivity. Back to bed. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, but, but gritty it's his age right 76ers fans are that age are very very positive yeah jason are you are you do you think it's a big deal that he sat out in denver of course it's not a big deal that he oh, sat hold out on, jason my fault i did go ahead oh man so that was the best point i ever made when i was muted. <laughs> but, all right so it wasn't a big deal that he sat out because he is injured. The issue that everyone's pissed off about is because he never plays in Denver. He hasn't played there since 2019. So everyone just wanted to see it one time, see him play there. And that's why everybody made a big deal about it. Should he have played hurt? Absolutely not. But if you're still not watching what he's doing this year, you're missing out. Back to the bench. So wrapping that up, I'll say this. Joel Embiid is not ducking Joker. Joel Embiid is ducking altitude. He doesn't really play in Utah. He doesn't play in Denver because he does have bad knees. He does have a bad back. And I've been to Denver. Obviously, I'm a fat person. I'm overweight. But even if you're a regular person, breathing up there is different. I was there with a very fit female, and she had an issue breathing when we were hiking. No, you I feel said, it. You I, feel I, I said, it. I'm out of a dangle mountain. I said, go on, girl, knock yourself out. I'll be right here I mean, with a snack when you come back down. So he's ducking the altitude, and it does affect your body. So if his knee's acting funny and it's swelling up, he's not ducking Joker. Because he plays against him all the time. He's ducking the altitude. So, but nobody makes that statement because it still makes him look bad that he's not playing right. through it. But again, it's what you started off with, Johnny Marks. If you're hurt, we need him healthy for something else. We don't I don't need him losing that. And just one last thing, uh LA Shore Parks and a lot of people, but he's the leader of that the MVP, all this stuff. It's unfair that they change the thing. Well. Halliburton and a lot of other guys are going to miss out on all NBAs coming up. A lot of guys only have like five games left where they're about to not get their bonus checks because of this. So yeah. It, yeah. as much as people say, oh, it's not fair for the MVP, this has a rippling effect through the league now if you're not playing the 67 games. So yeah. I think he's back in Denver. And, and you know what it's not doing, this rule? It's not It's not helping, right? And, and I get it. It's a nightmare for the NBA it's because ABC, ESPN, they're pissed. TNT, they're pissed because they know people are tuning in to see Jokic and Embiid. And Embiid was actually hurt. But it, it's this is the NBA. This is what it is, and it should it should hurt the league. It should because if I wait all year for like I, I always remember when Allen Iverson was the 76er, 
and he would lead the league when he was an away player. They would sell out every time because everybody wanted to see Allen Iverson play. Now imagine waiting all year to see Joel and B play or Kobe Bryant to play or Allen Iverson to play. And he's not playing because they're just sit, sitting him out because he's not hurt. But in this case, he's actually hurt. But I just don't know how you police it. You're gonna take you're gonna take away you're gonna take away MVPs, and I mean it's not affecting it anybody yet. So I just don't well, know how you police it. That, that's why I brought up the Halliburton thing because it's it's this year might be the first year where you see multiple guys losing out on not just the MVP. Like I said, if you're not making your all NBA a second team or first team, that's money out of your pocket. Can't get that same contract that you're eligible mm-hmm. for. Yeah. You, you're, you're ineligible for super maxes. Like right. that's where people are the weed for the trees or weed for the, whatever the, whatever the saying is you're missing out on those things because I want my super max bro. And I was injured this year, but now I'm not going to get it because I'm ineligible. So it, it, it does keep people from stat padding. Because that's why Joel played in the, the Pacers game because he had to finish to get his thirty for ten. So right. you know, you know that's that's why he stayed in that game. Everybody's like, why did he stay? He had to get that that it's number. The to yeah. yeah. Um, the last thing I'm gonna keep on while Mike's here. So, a guy that we all know very well. Uh, some people call him Doc, but I'm you know I don't. I call him Glenn. And uh, he got a new job. He swindled the job out of Milwaukee. And the first thing he did was give it a caveat. This, this is the hardest thing I've ever done. No one's done anything like this. Coming in midseason and taking over for a team, it, it's, it's going to be a lot of work. It's going to be really hard, guys. We're going to try our best. And, uh, yeah, we're, I'm, I'm coming in. And what does he proceed to do? First game in. Lose. No rotation with the young guys. You lose the game. Congratulations. Uh, uh, Mike, I'm going to start with you. How, how, do, do you miss – do you miss Glenn? Do you miss Doc oh, Rivers? I don't miss Glenn at all, but I, I do think it would be funny if if the if Joel Embiid and, and the Sixers lost Glenn in the second round. I think that would be hilarious. <laughs> See, this this lucky we're at the end of the show. Mike, I'm I'm kicking you off right now. I'm saying goodbye to you, man. Mike, on that note, because you know, maybe see, I, I've yelled more and cussed. I don't even cuss in my own show. I've cussed more in this episode than I have in like the last twenty combined, and it's because oh. you, Mike. Thank you for being here. We Thank appreciate you for having it. me. I appreciate it, guys. Have a good one. And, and I'll talk to you later. We didn't later. find out uh, what, what what bad Mike real problem is, but you know, we he he does. He is a Philly fan. So Johnny Marks. With that said, I ask you again. How do you feel about Glenn getting his new job? I love it. It's great. And did you did you see him after he was taking credit? Even though he lost the game, he was taking credit for something after the game. He was pumping himself up. Maybe it was how he he took over midseason, whatever it was. But he was talking. He was pumping himself up after the game. I think it's great, and I don't think it would be funny if the 76ers lost to Doc Rivers at all. <laughs> I don't think it would be funny at all. I I can't tell you how pissed I'd be if that happened. So, so, so shout out to. Uh, all the people on Instagram, by the way, just to put throw it in there. If you're on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, please go subscribe on uh, YouTube for me. And uh, for all the audio listeners, I appreciate you because 90% of the audience does listen to audio. But just go on YouTube and click the link and subscribe for your boy. Help me out in these streets. But uh, IG was killing Mad Mike this whole episode. <laughs> people yeah, just wanted me to mute his mic and cut him off. So I, we were coming to the end of the show anyway. So I kicked him off for you guys. Just know that I'm listening. I, I care about my audience and my viewers members but my mike was fun and uh at least i know that he is an eagles fan i will defend him on that when people try to go up against him because you know he had he had recall and something that made him happy that wasn't the super bowl and uh that that's what that is uh jason what do you think about the uh what about glenn are you, are you happy for him to get a job yeah so it just takes the bucks completely out of contention so we don't have to worry about him and uh john he was praising himself for his after the timeout plays his atos that's what doc was giving himself oh uh, yes he's really yes. good at the atos you know you have to see look what we were doing out there first uh. game like so like what a <laughs> joke that guy is man living off that one title oh uh, <laughs> so uh harry oh my god the the, the after timeout praise is hilarious because it's like he's already He's like shining a spotlight on the thing that we all know he's bad at. So it's like if this happened one time and it was it was good at all, which I'm not totally aware of what those plays were, uh, people are gonna be like, oh, well, then maybe he changed something. We're just gonna be fixating on the fact that he makes no adjustments and he's terrible at that. I mean, the Bucks are like like Jason just said. I mean, it's essentially 
they're out of contention because this man has blown however many, you know, there's the list of like eight, three, two leads, seven, three, one leads, or whatever it is. Like if there's, you it's know, it's updated every year. Things. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> I think this, I don't even know if this will be that year, but maybe the bucks are good enough to get him to another three, two, and then he'll blow that. So, you know, that, that would be hilarious to me. That like would be funny. That. <laughs> that, that, that would be funny. So it, it's, it, it kills me inside because I finally am happy in my situation. And I, I don't want to talk about Max. I was going to make a video about him. And I just said, you know what? I'll get views for it, but I'm not even going to do it. Cause I'm happy. I got a new girl. Her name is Nick nurse. And she's taking care of me. You know what I mean? <laughs> when I'm sick, she bring me some tea, some lozenges. You know what I'm saying? She calling timeouts. She's keeping the maintaining leads at the halftime. My dude's over here looking like Will Chamberlain. I mean, Mike, he's playing young guys and getting them in the rotation and uh, uh, building up players, you know, Building up guys, not trading them away, not stowing them on the bench or or getting rid of them. But I'm happy where I'm at. I don't want to talk about this guy. But the fact that Giannis Antetokounmpo ran his coach out of the league and has his brothers collecting a free check on the bench, how bad do you really want to win, bro? You are one of the top paid players in the league. Why don't you open up an ice cream stand and, and stick Giannis, uh, I can see the Theosaurus over there selling <laughs> ice cream. Uh, and running the business, but now you got him taking up a spot on an NBA team. I'll take four women off the WNBA and stick them on that bench over the Assassins that are correctly leads or whatever her name is. Why are these guys on the team? Because you're a narcissist and a weirdo, and you deserve everything you get from Glenn Rivers. Celebrate him, celebrate everything that he does. <laughs> he's Jared, he's a member of society. It's great. Um, so again, it, it's been a crazy show. I, I was I, again, I was very boisterous and loud. And saying things in a way that I usually don't do, but that my mic does that to me. But now that I'm calm, cool, and collected, don't forget to shop every little thing, every little detail.com. It's yeah. out there. Johnny Marks, wife's making awesome stuff, cool stuff. Check it out. Check out Johnny Mark. Follow his YouTube. He's already got more followers than me. I mean, I'm just and sub yeah, subscribe. Uh, when you're subscribing to Black Gritty on YouTube, subscribe to John Marks Media yes, on yes. YouTube as well. If yeah. all, uh, uh, well, a rising tide lifts all ships, the, the higher you push Johnny Marks, the more I can beg him to pull me up beside him in friendship and 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 non job ship. You know, we're, we're all in this together as unemployed adult men with families, Johnny Marks. So lift that tide and raise that boat. I appreciate you for coming on and I thank you. I know you probably don't want to hang around any longer. I didn't kept you for an hour. Um, we're going to go a little overtime and talk about some random stuff. So if you want to hang out, you're you're welcome to. I'm gonna go. Yeah. I'm gonna go try to get my uh, make love to my wife for the first hey! time. <laughs> Bonus. That's right. That's right. Hey, I look, texted her got... and asked her if she was still awake. That's called foreplay. <laughs> well, well, I mean, uh, you, you did do a good service. You you got her. You got her sponsorship. It wasn't just yours. You know what I'm saying? You you're out here putting in some work. You're like, look, I know, like, I got I got I got extra bonus sponsorships out here. We're doing the best we can. Oh, best we go. can. All right, All right brother, guys. Thanks. All right, thanks, John. See you, John. So that was fun. Uh, if you're still watching. Now it's time for the real talent to take over. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to talk to Harry. Oh, bye. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate that plug, Jason. <laughs> Come on, dude. Uh, in a few minutes, I want to talk to Harry about something that I personally don't know a lot about, but I'm trying to learn some stuff about. So maybe you should stick around and learn something, Jason. I mean, actually, unless you want to go home and make love to your lovely woman, because you got a woman at home too. Me and She's Harry definitely just, asleep. Me, oh, <laughs> <laughs> you got to text her. Me, me and Harry just in there all alone with no one beside me. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, I, I I like Mad Mike because he's just funny to me. But he says certain things of just, and you guys both know, the reason I'm talking to you two about this, yeah. we've been in DMs and I was out on Brett Clown early. Mm -hmm. I was, you know, Glenn Rivers, like all that stuff. Like there's certain things that I'm just out on. I, I love Ben Simmons. I bought BenVisionSimmons.com. I was all about it. And then three years in, I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. And it hit me. So I'm arguing with you guys for years before he finally showed his true colors. And I, I could be negative. But Matt Mike is just perpetually negative yeah i mean I, 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 it, it, it enrages me 
I didn't believe you, honestly, in the way you started out. It was very, you know, very chill, very, very <laughs> smiley, happy to be there. The, the memory that he brought out was a, a great memory that he brought up. I thought that was an awesome story and exactly what, you know, we were looking for, you were looking for. So, and then slowly but surely, you know, I can see him in the bottom, uh, this bottom panel, just like listening to some of those answers, getting ready to go out. And I mean, oh my God, the Niners, like <laughs> for him to call, him, call Joel and beat a fraud and then you know, want the Niners to win the Super Bowl. I'm just like, this is not, this does not align. Like, I don't get it. So it's very, uh, uh, by the way, uh, shout out to IG Live. You guys are about to get cut off because there's an hour time limit. I'm, it's not me cutting you off. It's just the internet cutting you off. Uh, again, YouTube, uh, Black Gritty, subscribe. You can watch the rest of the show or watch the whole show all the time. It's a, just a live. Appreciate you guys. Um, but yeah, he does that. And I'm like, dude, like nothing brings you joy. Like nothing. The dude is doing amazing stuff. And it's not like he's, shooting 43 throws he's he's dribbling behind the back pass between the legs getting assists like he looks so good and you're just eh, he's trying man I'm like, <laughs> real quick that free throw point you just made and if joel did shoot 43 throws he'd make 37 of them and that if steph curry did that we'd all be like man he's the greatest three throw, free throw shooter of all time it'd be a positive spin and for him it's always like oh but what a problem but Shaq was getting the same attempts probably as Embiid missing you know double the double the shots that Embiid's missing at the line and you know people never complain so it's just it just is what it is until he wins that's how it's going to be though and and I understand that but like like I said you and Jason know because I, I like I said I, I admit that I've been very hard but at the same time I, I appreciate when things are good so that that way I don't I'm just not running around angry all the time about everything and it's just weird to me when anyone's a fan like that because it almost feels like you're not even a fan at all like I, I just, it's just, I don't get it, Jason. Yeah, if he didn't have that memory, I probably would have thought he was a Cowboys fan too. So that's a good point. Because you listen to radio a lot, Jason, right? Like, doesn't it feel like he's just not a Philadelphia guy? I don't even know if it's not a Philadelphia guy. He just takes no joy from watching sports, and then at that point, why watch? Like, I get mad at myself when a one of our teams <laughs> loses a big game, and I'm upset for the next two or three days. Then I'm like, what am I doing? I'm like a little child. What's wrong with me? <laughs> And then the next week, I'm like, but if a couple of things change, we might win next yeah. week. <laughs> right? That quick, I'm back to it. Like, I quit the Sixers four times already. And then here I am back again, right? I uh, can't do it. My favorite thing you text me all the time is like, why do I even watch sports? Yeah, why, why? Why, why am I even raising my children to suffer through this pain? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I shouldn't do that. It's a bad father, yeah. but I'm going to still do it. <laughs> yeah. That's one of those, my favorite uh, like memes or whatever I've ever seen. It's like, you got to be a, you got to be an idiot to be a sports fan. Like <laughs> you're just deciding to, you know, you have your happiness affected by these teams. But Jason, you made a great point. Like is, I wonder if Mad Mike's a fan of, the sports first or the teams right because if it's all about the teams and their success then on some level i can get it but then the death and we all grew up you know obviously being homers but at the same time like we love sports and we love watching the games and if you don't enjoy that aspect of it then it does become a, a soap opera sort of <laughs> you know love affair like you want to watch the drama show and that's all really it's about so yeah it's it's interesting yeah i don't know like i said i, I <laughs> i've talked to him offline like and he's fine like he's normal like he's you know, like I said, I do I do make fun of him. I'm like, dude, you like, you're gang banging over birthday parties. Like, you're just not even enjoying anything. And he does, but the frustration that he has, like, I feel that. But at the same time, like, you know, hey, everyone's like, oh, give Harry Roseman his flowers. I'm like, wait till 2024. And like, oh, what do you mean? I'm like, just just wait and see what happens after you pay the quarterback and you have limited fun. And this is what I predicted would happen. But I also didn't not enjoy our 10-1 run. You know what I mean? I'm getting killed right now online from old videos because, you know, now they're in the playoffs. Like, again, engagement and views, I appreciate them all. There are tons of 49ers fans that have been watching all my videos and commenting. I'm like, thank you. Like, run up my numbers. But six weeks ago, five weeks ago, yeah, I was on top of the world. Now, guess what? I'm not talking as so much trash. Now, I still hate Brock Purdy. I don't believe in Brock Purdy. He's got to do one thing to help me because I did watch him almost lose to both teams in NFC North, which none of us really believed in. We were happy for the Lions, but nobody really believed in the Lions until they got to where they were. The the Packers, they beat the Cowboys, and we laughed because it's the Cowboys. But then when they went up 20, uh, uh, 20 points on the on the 49ers, like, man, they're running rough shot through these guys. And so I'm like, okay, well, well go do that to Patrick Holmes. You think you think Andy Reid's not kicking the ball? You think Andy Reid's not going to run the ball when he's up 20 points? Good luck. G good luck with that. 
So, you know, then, then if he if he beats them, I will I will make four videos <laughs> loving up on, on Brock Purdy. And he has gone super conservative in second halves this year in the playoffs, though. Just they struggle to score in the second half. So be uh be wary of that Chiefs going up big early and then the comeback starting in the second half. Well, I feel like he's doing that whole he, he's being the game manager, right? Mm -hmm. He's like, hey, run the ball. Spags has got the D on lock. And we're just going to run the ball. And then when he needs to, dial up a big play. It's almost like lulling them to sleep kind of thing. Because the Ravens' defense is really good. But they're better than the 49ers' defense. Oh, big time. Definitely better than them. They just uh, they played so undisciplined the other day. And didn't it feel like in that game when the Ravens scored, I mean, when the Chiefs scored the first two possessions of the game that the Ravens immediately abandoned everything? It was almost like when you watch teams play the Warriors in the NBA and you get, know you got to go three for three with them. So, like, the Ravens felt like they had to score when the truth was they didn't. Yeah, that that's that's pretty much happened. Did you get to watch the games, Harry? Yeah, yeah, no, I totally agree with that. I mean, it's 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 like shocking and it, it's sad. I mean, at the end of the day, like again, I'm I'm a sports fan. I'm a, you know, it's weird as I say that out loud. I'm like, am I a homer first or a sports fan first? I'm not totally <laughs> sure. But at the same time, like I I grew up. I wasn't a I didn't grow up coming. I played sports before I became a Philly fan, a Philly sports fan for sure. So my thing with this is like I love competition. I love two like alpha teams players whatever going at each other and not fucking up like <laughs> just both play well and whoever wins like that's what i want to see ultimately so when it's like a matter of just mental errors and like game plan errors it's just like damn like you really hate to see that so much and i totally agree i mean you got lamar jackson man like in the day don't turn him into tom brady right turn him into nobody just let him be lamar jackson he's a freak and he's an electric player so it's just hurtful to see that same thing with like dan campbell situation and those calls it's like Man, the, the the vibes of the Baltimore, right? Baltimore and Detroit, right? Two cities that we can relate to as, as Philadelphians. And it's like, man, they just they just shit the bed and it hurts. So and now that Johnny Marks is off, not that he's got a job anymore, but he still has to might go back to the real world workforce. Let me just right. tell you something about the NFL. There is no way in the world they're gonna let black ass Detroit and black ass Baltimore both go to Vegas and wild <laughs> the fuck out. Yeah. <laughs> There's no way on God's green earth if anybody oh imagined God. that they're yo, the hood. Would be pulling up. There'd be so many Cadillacs and Fords in Vegas. My goodness, there's no way on God's green earth they were letting the hood come to Vegas. You know how much that new sphere cost? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> People from Detroit would have been trying to race motorcycles up. You know what I mean? They would have been yeah. riding dirt bikes in the streets. There's no way in the world that Detroit and Baltimore were going to the fucking Super Bowl at the same time. Maybe one or the other. But there's no way in the world they're letting two of the most Hood gangster thuggalicious teams <laughs> roll out to Vegas <sighs> and descend on that city. That whole bit, you know what? I wish that we, as a spare, we could see that. That whole city would be burnt to the. Oh fuck my god, fire. that's <laughs> you describing that. I didn't even think about it. Like that sounds yeah. incredible. That sounds amazing. Like I would, and again, you know, there'd be birds fans there too because we go to that random ass game. So it's like <laughs> we would have be been there crazy. for Baltimore. Like yeah, you know I mean, like ah. <laughs> so I, 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 when he, I, Mad Mike said something again in my rant and my. My fuge of rage, I forgot it. But I was going to say it then. I'm like, man, that's I, I, I'm not going to say that with him on the air. <laughs> just, 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 you know, yeah, right. I'll, I'll keep that one separate just because somebody's going to be sensitive that doesn't know my humor and uh, try to associate that with him. But I was like, man, there's no way in the world they would have let that happen. Yeah, yeah, let's get Taylor Swift in here, okay? The, yeah. the Swifties got money. They travel. You know what I mean? They're calm. They're, they're not riding dirt bikes and popping wheelies, you know? They're off rhythm. They can't swag or serve. So, you know. Why do you think Philly always makes it in some weird location? Jacksonville, Minnesota, yeah. Arizona. There's always some weird place where they can hide Philly fans. That's a good That's point. A, wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's cr <laughs> see, yeah. this is how conspiracy <laughs> start. That's how conspiracy start. <laughs> so good. It makes you think like that could be a real thing. That might be. I like, saw I saw something today that said that every so the every year that the Niners have made the Super Bowl by beating a team that had blue in their logo, they won the Super Bowl. And the two times that they beat a team that didn't have blue in the in the NFC championship, they lost. So this would be the first time they lose to a team or they lose after beating a team that had blue. Again, that's like bullshit. Yeah. made up stuff but at the same time <laughs> i mean you know i don't know what's going on right now so like taylor swift might be my only hope that the nfl will rig it for the chiefs because well, they need that money last thing and then uh just so everybody knows harry and i are going to talk some ufc i don't know if you want to stick around for that jason you can if you want to uh but the other thing that i saw that was really dumb but weird is like oh when both teams are red the yeah. white team always wins, except for the time the Chiefs played the 49ers the last time. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, you know, your thing with the blue, the red and the white, and the red and the red. I'm like, there's 
you know, for, for, for a Super Bowl, you just hear so many things with that where it's like, okay, that could happen, this could happen, that could happen. You know, it starts getting so crazy with all the numbers and, and, yeah. and pressures and things like that. Real, real quick about that point about the last time they played, I was actually born on Super Bowl Sunday of that Super Bowl. The last, the Chiefs Niners Super Bowl, um, I believe it was that one. So <laughs> I don't know what that means for this. Maybe I got some luck to rub for the Randy Reed and the Chiefs, but. There you go. Well, you know, we, we all despise how young you are anyway. That's why I took as many jabs as I could telling you happy birthday. Go for it. <laughs> I don't know if you. I don't know if you picked up on that. You know. Yeah, hey, I mean, all I heard was "Happy Birthday." That was nice. I was, <laughs> I was, what is what? What is your generation? I'm. I, so I think recently they've like did a hybrid generation. Like I'm not. I'm like a zillennial. Like I'm definitely okay. in between. I'm. I, you know. I'm. I'm. So, I'm not my brother, and I'm not. You know, the, the team. I'm not old there. enough to start calling out generations because I surely wanted to just throw a jab in there. Like you damn millennials. No, wait, wait, am I a millennial? You're a millennial. <laughs> I don't even know what I am. Pretty sure you're a millennial. So I didn't I didn't I didn't throw it out there because I'm like, I don't even know. Is he Gen Z? Like what what's nah. the cutoff date? Like what's the what's the expired by date? Depends what depends what you Google, what website you go on, but I'm pretty sure there's a like a little hybrid. Cause again, I remember when times when I made an analog TV and you know the internet wasn't what it was and all this stuff, but and I also grew up, you know, with a smartphone. Not a smartphone, I had a, I had a iPod <laughs> touch in uh seventh grade. So again, I wasn't smartphone era, you know, growing up with that. Jason, are you hearing this? this guy yeah, I'm just it. feeling old. I'm over here. <laughs> rotary phone that looks stuff this, up here this, on AOL. I remember that. You know what I'm saying? I remember some of that. <laughs> this guy AOL dial up. I remember that. This guy had an iPod touch out here. <laughs> yeah. He had an iPod touch. Yeah, I guess that wasn't the best point, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's horrible. Uh, so let me pull this up real quick. 